Welcome to SolarTechDIY.com. This is Patrick speaking. I'm demonstrating how to remove trapped air from beneath strings you've recently encapsulated. This is going to be a necessary step to ensure that the trapped air doesn't affect the output, but also that that trapped air in the form of bubbles doesn't threaten the long-term lifespan of your solar panel. And how might that happen, you might ask? Well, over time, you know, if you, if you spot or note the presence of these air bubbles and decide to just let them let them lie, there you think about the optics of bubbles being in between your tempered glass and your solar cell. Now, I'm not an optician and I'm not a laser scientist, but seems to me that photons coming from the sun making it through the low iron tempered glass only to be disrupted by air bubbles seems to be counterintuitive as not being very helpful to the process. So it also looks bad. So it's best to remove them. Now the way we poured the encapsulant if you'll recall from the previous video, we had secured the strings to the substrate with dabs of silicon prior to pouring the encapsulant. And we did that so that we could connect the end runs. You know, that's when we connect the strings, you know, wiring them in series, uh, negative to positive. And, you know, there's a benefit to performing in that fashion because it's always nice not to have your strings moving. Uh, it's good for them. It keeps them from breaking. It protects the alignment of the strings. But here's where you pay the piper because it forces you to pour the encapsulant over the tops of the strings which are affixed to the glass. And while encapsulant materials are all generally self-leveling, it does become a little difficult for the encapsulant to flow around uh, cells that have been uh, secured with uh, silicone caulking uh, because it, it's you know it's a very viscous thick fluid it's kind of like pouring a very thick maple pancake syrup thicker than any I've ever seen but you kind of get the idea it's like pouring molasses so as the slow moving substance works its way over the top of the cells after you, you know, as you've poured them, it has virtually no resistance there. It, it will cover no problem because we're going to assist it with a paintbrush. But on the other side, in between the tempered glass and the negative or sun facing side of the solar cells, those air those surfaces are a little bit more difficult for the self-leveling. So we have to sometimes step in and assist like we're doing here. Now, if we hadn't secured the strings with the silicon, uh, nor had we soldered the end runs into place, we could have poured a thin layer of the, the encapsulant on the substrate that's free of any uh, solar cells. So if you could picture in your mind's eye, you've got your substrate and it's sitting over your cutout table and you pour your just a little, a little volume of the encapsulant enough so that there's at least a coating over the entire substrate surface. And then if you place your strings onto the substrate, you're, you're sort of guaranteeing there's not going to be any uh, portions of the substrate that don't have encapsulant. And the only possible complication is that you, you, you trap air in the process of setting the strings down. But just as we're doing here in this step, it's actually easier to remove the air bubbles using that method, or I'm sorry, using this method, if you are just laying the strings on top of the substrate. So since we didn't do that, we're having to do it the hard way. Uh, 
and when I say the hard way, uh, it's not really difficult. It just requires exacting gentle care, a, a great deal of your attention. Because if you lose focus and apply more pressure than you should, you'll fracture one of the cells. So you, you, you have to pay attention for all 36 cells. And you'll notice that when I'm pushing with the brush, I, I'm bending the bristles so that they're acting like leaf springs on a vehicle. There's downward pressure for sure. You can see that I'm pressing, but only a small fraction of that tension is being applied to the solar cell surface. And by adjusting my, my point of attack, my angle, I can either increase or reduce the amount of pressure I'm applying. Now, it's very gratifying when you're you're applying this pressure and as you look to the right side there, you can actually see the air that had been previously trapped under those cells is now escaping. We can see the air bubbles popping and coming up. And those are all air bubbles that would have provided some level of reflective resistance to incoming photons. So uh, while it's tedious, it is required that you go through and touch each cell. And after you've done it a few times, or at least after you've covered a few of the cells, you'll get a, f a feel, a sensitivity for uh, the type of pressure you need to apply. Now remember, these are extremely fragile wafers. So they're, they're not going to withstand very much pressure at all. In fact, you know, you're apt to crack them if, if you're not very careful here, but therein lies the benefit of the paintbrush. Those bristles are just unmatched for giving you control over the amount of pressure you're putting. Now, of course, we're doing all 36 cells independent of visual inspection. I assume there's air trapped under there. And indeed, I'm correct. We can see the evidence in the popping bubbles. But we do need to do a visual inspection to confirm or deny the presence of bubbles once we finish this. Now, I, in the instruction manual and in the ebook, I talk about using a table or a plywood board that has a cutout sufficient in size so that you can rest your whip over the cutout and then be able to crawl under the table and look up through your substrate. It would be the opposite angle of what we're looking at now. Instead of looking down, you would be on your back looking up. And when you're in that configuration, it makes it possible for you to comfortably examine each portion of the, the strings, uh, the cells, you can really take your time, examine each segment or quadrant or however you want to examine your, your product. Um, and I, I mention that because, you know, if, if you take a shortcut on this, you know, if you, if you just skip this step of creating a cutout or at least using sawhorses or some method giving you visual access, you'll have no idea what's going on underneath those cells that you can't see. Uh, you know, and, and that is just a surprise you can do without. There's just a, no telling what you'll discover when you flip that panel over after it dries. Uh, and I just don't think it would be good. So, you know, be creative. Find a way to get that substrate off, the, off a table so you can see it. Uh, because once the once it cures, removing the air bubbles is almost impossible. Uh, really, you, you, you wouldn't be able to. So it's best to try and minimize the introduction, and or at least provide yourself avenues for dealing with them when they when you do encounter them. Now, this product, Solar Tight 384, takes several days to dry. So the next segment we film is going to be installing a Tedlar back sheet. Um, and we don't do that until the 
encapsulant is tacky to the touch, so it will adhere. The the uh, Tedlar kind of act like glue. So um, Solar Tight 384, I give it a week before I touch the the panel again. Now you don't have to use an encapsulant that requires such a long curing process. Uh, I used it so I could have enough time to talk and, and demonstrate the process. Now conversely, QCL 214 is a encapsulant product that I particularly love to use because you mix it as a one-to-one -one ratio. So mixing doesn't require a PhD in uh, mathematics and it cures very quickly, 28 minutes. Uh, so that's an encapsulant where you had best know what you're doing, do it quickly, and uh, hopefully you don't encounter any obstacles. Uh, but if we were using that type encapsulant, we wouldn't have time to do what you're seeing here. If I was using QCIL 214, I would pour the encapsulant over the glass, then lay the strings down because you don't have time to do this. So, the process takes time, but it's war. It's a in great investment in time. You wouldn't want to look at the other side of this panel if you hadn't taken the time to do this. It's worthwhile. We may have a few pockets of trapped air when all is said and done, but sometimes that happens. We try and minimize it, uh, but sometimes it's unavoidable. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.